Hey, what's up guys? This is gonna be a kinda unthorough tutorial on how to do side feed to top feed conversion with the injector dynamics rails and line conversion kit and also how to use the plug and play connectors. So you can see here, I already installed my rails on both sides. And to do this, there might be instructions um, I know there's instructions to install these lines that are also kind of vague. They're, well, not vague, but you really have to have a good visualization in your head of what they will be, of what it will look like. So I'm going to go through the system. This is going to attach to your five, my 5 sixteenths supply line, which would be the top line on that, that tree of fuel lines. We have supply, top, return, bottom, and then I think there's like a purge valve or something that I'm pretty positive goes to this blue connector. It goes to this blue hose right here, which is the bottom line, which I'm gonna have to extend because we no longer have that stock of three. So I'm gonna cut the 5 16 line to accommodate for this because I don't want the line to be squiggling everywhere. And this is gonna tap into the 5 16 line and I'm gonna use the the original 5 16 fuel injection clamp on that. And then to install the rails themselves, it's pretty simple. The rail, they come with bolts, these Allen bolts, and then a little spacer. And the spacer goes in between the rail and the manifold. There's no instruction for that. It's pretty self-explanatory, but that's how it goes. The injectors, you want to put a little bit of lube on them, or grease. I use petroleum jelly, I have no idea, a, a tiny bit of petroleum jelly. I cannot tell you if that's the best idea or not, but that's what I did, and they slid, they slid in fine. Um, the injectors have a universal connection, and the kit comes with the connectors. Injector Dynamics has a video on this, so definitely check out the video, I'll post a link to it. You can use their video to reference this. The plug isn't as obvious as some plugs where the, uh, which way to orientate it, or orient it. I don't know how you'd say that. Um, but their video has really nice pictures on how to actually do the plug and play, the connectors themselves, and to avoid buying the plug and play harnesses, I should say. They give you um, nine, they give you nine total crimps and, um, like weather protectant packers. So you can make a mistake on one. You have one one mulligan. And now to get to the fuel. So I got sidetracked. 5 16 supply line psh, into your first fuel rail, first two injectors. Goes under the manifold, over the manifold, however you want it. Pretty big line. I have it routed under. Into the back side of the passenger rail. Through the passenger side rail. Into this line. This line I routed under and then around to the, my relocated FPR, which right here is a barb fitting, just like this one. You can't see it though, but there's a barb under here attached to this 5 16 fuel hose, clamped down by two fuel injection clamps, attached to my FPR. Here's my FPR return, which is again attached to 5 16 line, and this is going to attach. I think I'm going to go straight to the field dampener with this one. I'm going to go straight to the field dampener with this one and this is going to be my return line. I'm, I'm not sure how to route it yet, maybe like this. I'll probably cut some, but it's going to be routed under my charge pipe because I have front mount. And um, so that's kind of the gist of it. Their, their instructions are clear, but it's, it takes some visualizing and it takes some manipulating and you definitely need more more vacuum hose I would say for sure and more um, I'm not sure what you'd call this hose I think it's like purge hose but this is the bottom line of that triple fuel line tree thing this is the bottom line which attaches to a metal piece goes under the manifold and then to that purge 
that purge valve, or, I don't even know if that's the valve, but that, I think it's like fuel vapor traveling, but we have no longer have the metal line, so you're going to need more, uh, more line. I bought all this line just so I had extra, and I'm going to route this under the manifold into that blue connector where it should be. I'm bypassing the metal, and I'm going to maintain the stock purge system, and it will be perfect. So what you need is vacuum hose, that purge hose, wire strippers, crimpers like this, It also is not a bad idea to get more 5 16 fuel hose. I happen to have this lying around from a different car I used to have, but it'll give you more leeway in case you want to choose a different setup. In the instructions from Injector Dynamics, it recommends to relocate your FPR, so that's exactly what I did. It said keep it away from the heat of the turbo and put it over here. So I relocated the FPR. I still have the vacuum reference hose right here, which needs to be longer because my original one went um that goes to the boost gauge and this one was just too short where i couldn't it wouldn't reach across the manifold to get to this vacuum source like it needs to be so i bought more vacuum line more of the purge hose and you might as well get some 5 16 fuel hose while you're at it you may not need it depending on what you you're feeling or what your setup is you probably won't need it i would say but once you get to this point you can decide. You definitely will need more vacuum hose, I would say, though, unless you have really long vacuum hoses. And again, the purge hose, because there's nothing that comes with the kit that lengthens that hose, and that's kind of a unique size. It's not very, very common. Besides that, you throw your injectors in, you route the lines, you get rid of this whole tree. I was extremely confused in the beginning, but this whole tree, all the injectors, all the lines, and the original three three stocks are gone. It is a completely new fuel system. There's basically no nothing stock from the supply return and purge line over. The whole manifold is accommodated by a simpler system, less same amount of lines, but a much simpler system. There's no rubber, there's no metal. There may be rubber inside, whatever, but you you know what I'm saying. There's not all these random connections that can wear out, that could leak. It's just solid lines across. Relocate the fuel pressure regulator, and that's it. I would I would recommend doing these plugs yourself. It'll save you wiring length. It'll save you complexity in case a harness goes bad or a connection gets wet. And for forty dollars, this is not hard. I can probably do one of these connectors in five minutes five to ten minutes and I, I repair cars professionally I'm like I'm an entry-level BMW tech so I do do wire repair I am skilled I am slightly experienced but it's really nothing amazing the hardest part honestly is having the right tools having the confidence to know that you're doing it right and once you have those two things it's like it's just mental physical thing if you're afraid to do it Maybe it is a good idea to get the plug and play, but if you can use the wire stripper, if you can use a crimper, that's all that all that's all it is to it. It'll save you forty dollars, it'll save you complexity, and your car will be more OEM in stock than as if you have the plug and play adapters. So I would absolutely do them yourself. Just cut some of the heat shrink back, tape it up after. Do the connectors correctly as injector dynamic says i'm not even gonna be able to show you the photo this is what the crimp looks like when you're done you want to have this piece which is the back part of the crimp you want to have that back part of the crimp wrapped around the green leather packs and to put the to put the crimp in or the terminal in, it looks like this. So you have the crimp facing up and the connector, that little ramp on the right. So you go. I have my ramp on my right. 
Okay, the crimp goes up, push it in there, and sometimes you won't feel it click, but then if you tug on the wire, if it doesn't come out, you know it's locked. And then the last step is just to push this red lock down, and the connector is made, and you're ready to go. I'll, make, I'll take another video when this is all wrapped together. And obviously you're gonna need a tune. These are 1050X injectors. They're made for um, different fields than gas. I'm not gonna be running any alternate fields, but, but the, 1000, the normal 1000s were out of stock or not produced anymore, discontinued. So I went to 1050s. I will need a tune. So uh, this video was shot a long time ago. After I installed these injectors, I then diagnosed that my car had a, a low compression on one cylinder. So I replaced the whole short block, all new gaskets, head studs, um, stage two short block from IEG. Lots and lots of work. And then I was like, oh shit, like I have this footage, I should like make this video. I have a lot of other footage too that is kind of slowly making its way to being edited. But regardless of that, I would recommend getting the plug and play harnesses now, contrary to what I said, because I put the new short block in my car, I have the injectors in, they're all taped up, the wires are all taped up, super nice, super clean install, and like I, my car is like misfiring like badly, and I legitimately thought that I washed out my brand new short block, because I was like checking for spark, all this shit. It wasn't getting spark, I think it's a bad coil, or maybe I was listening to the wrong cylinder. And I was like, holy shit, like, I replaced the coil and the spark plug, and I was like, it's still misfiring, like it's washed out, because 1050 spraying in it. I was messing with the VE table to get it to like run around Lambda, um, all this shit. And I was like, like, wow, like, I probably just washed out my new engine, because I was playing with the VE table, telling it to run more fuel to get it to run about Lambda, which would just be washing out that cylinder way harder because it was running lean, lean misfire, more oxygen. So to counteract that, I just added more fuel basically through the VE table. And um, yeah, I thought the engine was like destroyed after all that work, whatever, shitty feeling, like life goes on, like it was like whatever. So I went and bought a compression tester again because I didn't have access to work. Well, I, I did have access to work, but like I didn't want to drive all the way to work. So I took one of my parents' cars to Harbor Freight, got a compression tester, compression tested the cylinder I thought I washed out, and it had good compression. So I'm like, the only thing left is fuel. And after days of diagnosis, days, driving it around, I drove it around, misfiring like, like an idiot, rookie mistake, whatever. Um, sometimes it didn't feel that bad, but it's always a dead misfire. Or I think I think sometimes even it made intermittent contact. So it was like this really, really weird problem. Sometimes it ran mint, it ran so smooth, sometimes it ran so bad. And for these reasons, I would recommend getting the plug and play harnesses because I was like the only thing that can be happening now if it's not getting spark. Or if it is, I know it's getting spark and it's not washed out, it's not getting fueled. So I took the tape off and the power wire was undone. Like it came off the crimp and was not in there anymore. So instead of washing out the cylinder, it was just running like a dry cylinder, which is obviously way better. So, but for these reasons, I think the wire got pulled out because during the install of the manifold, there's like kind of some tension on different areas, different wiring harnesses, different lines. So for these reasons, I would buy the plug and play harnesses. They give you some extra length. They give you peace of mind that it's a good solid connection and that it's gonna work. And if you have the money to buy all these parts, like I balled out and I was like, what, whatever, like my car might be blown, but I need to replace these injectors anyways. Cause me and my tuner always thought that the, um, there's something wrong with the fuel system. Like, it wasn't really the stock size injector according to the duty cycle we were running and all this other nonsense. 
So I did it almost as like a maintenance slash reliability thing, and then I found out the engine was broken. But this is a, it's like a very expensive setup. I think all in all, is I spent over a thousand dollars in these parts. So if you have the money, I just I'd say buy the plug and play plug and play harnesses for sure. Thank you for watching this video. Good luck. Obviously, you got to take the manifold off. If you can do, if you can take the manifold off, I'd say you're, you can definitely do this. It's a little bit it's a little bit complicated with all the fuel lines, but Definitely doable. So far, so good. Reliable. I, it idles well. I was right around Lambda. I self-tuned it. I'm still still not boosting my car yet on the new short block. I have almost 1,200 miles the new short block. Haven't been able to get on the dyno yet. No problem. I'm just driving around slowly. Pretty exciting. Thanks for watching. Uh, comment. Give me feedback. Like. Whatever. Subscribe. I got some up some content in the makes because now I'm at school. I'm not working full time like a crazy man, so I can take some time to edit, to sit down. Peace.